Hi, and welcome to the Unreal Engine for You tutorials. In this video, I will show you the advantages of using the Detour Crowd AI controller over using the regular AI controller. So, the Detour Crowd AI controller is the one that you should choose if you want to have several agents uh, moving from one spot to another spot, or let's say that you want to create like an angry mob, or even if you want to go even further, and to have uh, dozens of zombies pursuing and trying to kill a player, the Detour Crowd AI controller is the one that you should use to accomplish this task. Um, to, for this project and for this tutorial, I use the third person template, the third person project by default. So as you can see here, I have the third person level with the third person mannequin and basically that's it so now for this video the idea is to have and several um, ai agents let's say a bunch of ai agents moving from one spot to another spot and you will see that eventually they will uh, come across with each other and unfortunately they will um, be as obstacles and they will start to interfere one with each other and they will get stuck um, and they will can can't overcome the thing, and they will not be able to accomplish the, the the task that is going to a certain location or to achieve a certain goal. And the way to to overcome this is to use the Detour Crowd AI controller. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to have to create a, an AI agent and then spawn spawn over the level a bunch of them. And, and give them a, a, a destiny, some destiny locations, and you will see that they will get stuck in each other and they will not be able to comply uh, what the, the, the orders that we gave to them. To do so, first, I will have to go to the Blueprints folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I will name this folder AI, which stands for Artificial Intelligence. And it will be inside this folder that I'm going to create the, the, the AI agent and then all the things required to spawn the AI agents inside this level. And so you can see them moving around from one spot to another spot. To make these things more, uh, to show you these things more effectively, uh, I, what I'm going to do is to delete this platforms because they will uh, not be needed I just need the this whole arena so you can see them cross from one spot to another spot and now to get rid of these weird shadows I'm going to build the light so everything goes clean and stays clean and that's it okay now the next thing is to select our third person character our mannequin and I'm going to delete this guy as well because I just want to show you AI agents moving from one spot to another spot another thing that I am going also to do is to select this text render and move uh, change its text to a more appropriate one which will be Detour Crowd AI Controller. So, because this is the thing that I want to demonstrate. Now, I have here the third person character. I have my third person game mod. I will not change anything of this. I just am going to create a copy of our third person character and place that copy inside our AI folder. Now, inside of AI folder, I'm going to rename this copy of the third person character as AI Mannequin. And this AI Mannequin will be the AI agent that will instantiate several times, so you can see uh, several agents, so that's it. Several instances of, of this AI mannequin 
moving around from one spot to another spot and from this place to that place and so on. Now we're going to dig the code inside the AI mannequin and inside the AI mannequin we have the, the classic code for the game handling the gamepad input, movement input, VR and so on and since this guy will only be driven by AI we won't need any of this so let's just delete all this stuff. Also if you look at the our AI mannequin in the viewport you will see that he also has a follow camera component and the camera boom and we also don't need this because we are not going to, to use the camera. This will not be controlled by the player, just by AI. So we just have to delete this as well because they are not necessary. Finally, on this guy, I want to show you one thing. If I click on this part of the AI mannequin itself, on the pawn section, you will see a, speci uh, a special parameter which is the AI controller class. Here is where you specify which is the AI controller that will control this guy. In this case the one that is selected is the default AI controller but you can create your own AI controller and specify that your own AI controller will control um, this guy by just selecting your class here. Right now, since I didn't create anything, I just have the, the defaults, which are the AI controller. And one of those is the Detour Crowd AI controller that I'm going to show you next. So you can see the differences between one and another. So I will start first by using the default one, the AI controller. And then I will move to the Detour Crowd AI controller so you can spot the differences. So basically right now, I'm just going to stick to the default. Okay, now we have our AI mannequin. Now I'm going to create a second actor. Um, I'm just going to create that actor and that's it. It's going to be an AI spawner that will spawn several instances around the map. Uh, of And those instances will be instances of the AI mannequin. So I'm going to right click, create a basic asset. It's a blueprint class. The parent class will be the a default actor, the actor base class. And then I'll name my, 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 my new blueprint class AI Spawner because this entity will be the one that will be responsible to spawn lots of AI agents around the map. To do so, I'm just going to drag it more or less in the middle of the level. As we can see, is not really in the middle, so I'm going to tweak its position values and I'm going to type minus 400 on the Z, uh, on the X uh, value, sorry, on the X, not Z, on the Y minus 30 and on the Z I want 240 because I want it to be a little bit in the air so the AI characters are spawned like this so their feet are on the ground. Now to do this I just have to open my AI spawner and I will show you uh, right away how to uh, spawn just one uh, AI mannequin and then by using a for loop will instantiate lots and lots of them. So for now just spawn just one AI agent. So I'm going to open my AI spawner and inside the event graph you have the event begin play, the event actor on the begin overlap. We are not going to, to need this one and neither the event tick. So we can select these two and press delete and that's it. We are just going to need the begin play so when the game starts we are going to spawn right now just one AI agent. So I'm going to drag a wire from the event begin play and I'm going to type spawn and notice that the first option that I have is spawn AI from class and if I pick this one I have my node spawn AI from class and if we go 
digging this node you will see that the the first option is the pawn class here i can select which kind of pawn i want in my case will be the ai mannequin if i want my ai pawn to run any behavior tree i just had to select that behavior tree here for this specific tutorial we won't need any behavior trees so i'm going to leave this empty and the, these ones are the, the location, uh, the rotation and no collision file which will test if the player can be spawned on that spot or if you are something on, on the same position it, it will fail and will not spawn. So we are going to, we are not uh, changing any of this, we are just using for now the location and the location where I'm going to spawn my AI mannequin for now will be just the center of my AI spawner. So I'm going to use my actor location. So I'm going to get my actor location. That's it, compile, save. And now I don't need to click play. I just need to press simulate and that's it. As you can see, every time I press simulate, you see an AI agent being spawned exactly at the spot of my AI spawner. So right now that's it. Now what I am going to do is instead of spawning just one AI character I'm going to spawn let's say a circle. Lots and lots of them. Let's imagine that I'm going to have a circle with lots of them and I want to, okay, supposing, uh, uh, let's say a circle has uh, 30, uh, 360 degrees. So let's instantiate 36 AI mannequins, which mean that from 10 degrees to 10 degrees and to 10 degrees on this that circumference or that circle, I'm going to instantiate or to spawn one AI mannequin. So... For spawn, this code spawns one AI mannequin, and I just I don't want just one. I want several of them, so I'm going to use a for loop. And by using a for loop, now this code will instantiate this quantity of AI mannequins. So I'm going to, to, from this for loop, I'm going from 0 to 35, which means that I will have 36. And since um, um, a circle has thir uh, 360 degrees, I will, and I have 36, I want to have 36 pawns, which means that from uh, 10 degrees to 10 degrees, I will instantiate one pawn, or I will spawn one AI mannequin. So since it's from 10 degrees to 10 degrees, I'm going to multiply this by 10. Now, since I have multiplied this by 10, I'm going to make a rotator and I'm using this, this um, value as the Z value of the rotation. This way I have a circle on the Z using the, the Z axis as um, the rotation of the circle. Now I just have to pick my uh, vector, my, my, the, my rotator, sorry, and convert it to a vector. So I use get rotation x vector and this way I can convert that uh, the, the, the rotation of the each point or each degree of the circumference as um, a vector or a position of the circumference. The thing is that I don't want all of them to be spawned here on a tiny radius, I want them to be spawned like so. So I have to multiply this vector. Let's say if I want to have a radius 
of 11 meters it will be I must multiply this by 1100 so if I add this to the center of my AI spawner which is this thing here the actor location and now set the result as the location of my AI um, agents that are being spawned let me compile save now if I press simulate boom that's it I have 36 AI mannequins that have been spawned around this point now my idea is first make him to face all of them are facing this wall I don't want that I want them to each one face the center of this circle to be facing the center and then what I'm going to do is for them to switch positions so I'm going to tell to this guy to switch position with this one tell to this guy to switch position with this one this guy and this one will also switch positions and so on and so on and by doing that all those guys will uh, that is them to go to the opposite position of the circle they will go through the optimal route which goes by the center of the circle and all of them will get stuck by each other and they won't will get um, blocked by each other and they won't move so to do this the first thing is let them face the, the, the center of the circle and then tell them to move towards to the other side so for them to move to for them to face the center sorry to, for them to face the center of the circle the first thing is to on our AI spawner our AI spawner I already have the rotation that was combined I'm just going to move this a little bit up so I can reuse this so this rotator already gives me the the rotation or let's say the degrees of so I can convert this into a vector to get these positions and now I'm going to use that rotation also so that they and apply that rotation to each character so they are going to face um, the center of the of the AI spawner to do so I cannot use I cannot simply use this rotation I have to combine or to add to this rotation so let's combine rotations um, combine rotators I will have to add 180 degrees on the z-axis as well and apply this um, rotation to the rotation of the spawn character for those who have OCD don't worry I tend to have everything no no lines being crossed so everything settles in so yeah it's more or less cool yeah straight lines I know people like straight lines so yeah and basically so I'm using the, this rotation and converting it to a vector to generate the circle for the location and then I add to that rotation 180 degrees and apply that rotation to the characters that are being spawned and this way when they are spawned all of them are facing the center of the AI spawner so right now we, all, we already have all, all things uh, almost set up we just need one more thing which is to let tell to the guys to move to the other side or to the opposite side of this circle so let's do it I'm going to the AI spawner again 
this AI spawner, this node, the spawn AI from class returns me the pawn. And I will get the, the spawned pawn. And I'm going to cast this into my AI mannequin. Yeah. And using this as an AI mannequin, since my AI mannequin is controlled by an AI controller, I can get my AI or its AI controller. And having that AI controller, I can say to that AI controller to move to a location. And notice that move to a location uses AI and navigation. This means that this is using nav mesh navigation. So basically, I'm spawning an AI mannequin and I'm grabbing its AI controller and telling to the AI controlling, please move your character to this destination point. And what is that destination point? That destination point will be calculated using this rotation because we already have used this rotation to face the character to the center of the AI spawner. So we are just going to convert this into a vector. And now that we have already converted this into a vector, we are going to multiply it again by the radius of the circle, which is 1100. And now we are going to add this value to the center of our spawner, which is the actor location. Get actor location. So if we sum this up, what we have is basically the center of the of the the, the circle um, and we add to the center of the, the circle the rotation of the facing character multiplied by the radius of the circle. So basically we are telling to each character to go to the opposite side where he is standing right now. Yeah. Now if I compile and click save Notice that if now I press play, nothing will happen. And why nothing will happen? Because I have not placed yet an um, navigation bounds volume. So we don't have yet any nav mesh. So I'm going to volumes, going to nav mesh bounds volume, drag it into the scene. Now press P so we can see the nav mesh. And now in the properties, we are going to extend the X. Yeah, like so. Let me, okay, yeah, like so. Let me put this more in the center. And now extend these contents of the box. And now put it, yeah, tall enough. And yeah, that's it. Now, if we click simulate, notice that they are moving, but now they get stuck with each other. Let me hide the nav mesh, and if we click play, that's it. The beautiful thing about the simulate is while the AI is running, we can wander and travel around and, and move from one side to another side and see the AI agents moving, scavenging, doing whatever you want. So this is quite cool. It's really cool because you can go around and see and notice that when I every time I simulate when you see they are start colliding they they get stuck and they get messed with each other and they can't move anymore but if I'm going again to our AI mannequin remember that I said that it was here on the pawn section that we could choose which is the AI controller class and if I, instead of AI, the regular AI controller, I select the Detour Crowd AI controller and click Compile and Save, just by performing this change, 
and now if I click on simulate you will see that they start to move around and they are managing to go to their spots I'm going to make this bigger and simulate this again simulate and we will see that they start wandering and moving and yeah they are not stuck anymore so as you can see this is really 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 good so if you use the detour crowd ai controller as it is said here on this text you can manage to have a bunch of ai characters moving from one side to other side and they will not interfere to each other so i'm going to simulate this once again sometimes it's not it does not go so well but we can go here and be here in the middle and you can see that it goes pretty well i'm going to simulate this again because sometimes it not, does not go so well to see if okay now they are moving and yeah it's really 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 fine so basically that's it thank you for watching my videos um i hope you subscribe my channel i hope you enjoy my tutorials and see you next time